Okay guys, let's continue our e-lecture series with the next topic, periodicity. Periodicity is a trend of properties across the periods or down the groups. For periodic trends, we're going to focus on the five different trends including atomic radii, ion size, isoelectronic ionization energy, and electronegativity. Let's start with atomic radii. Atomic radii is one half the distance between the nuclei. Look at the example of the two hydrogen atoms here. And look at the trends. The atomic radii decreases when we go across the periods and increases as we move down the rows. Let's look at nitrogen versus fluorine. Nitrogen is in row 2, group 15, and fluorine is in the same row but group 17. Fluorine has lower atomic radii, while nitrogen has the larger atomic radii. And when comparing nitrogen and aluminium, aluminium is a bit lower in the predictable. Aluminium is now going to be the one that has larger atomic radii. The atomic radii of an element is determined by two factors. The first one, effective nuclear charge denoted as Z effective. It is the positive charge felt by an electron. It can be calculated by subtracting number of protons to the number of electrons filled at the inner orbital. Electrons moving around the nucleus do not experience the same nucleus attraction. Electrons closer to the nucleus experience greater nucleus attraction. The second factor is screening effect, or also known as shielding effect. Screening effect is caused by the mutual repulsion between the inner shell electrons and the outer shell electrons. It is also occur between electrons of the same shell but is less effective. When we go across the first row of the transition elements or D-block elements which contains 10 elements from scandium to zinc, the atomic radii tend to approximately constant except of scandium and titanium. This still has something to do with atomic radii. Instead of looking at neutral element, we are going to look at an ion size. Remember that an ion is an element with a charge. If you have an ion, it is an element with negative charge and if you have an ion, it is an element with positive charge. What happened to this ion size? It increases as we move down a row. It's not as straightforward as neutral element atomic radii. You need to look at a lot of different factors. Let's try to compare the sulfur and its anion sulfur 2 minus. The first thing that we need to do is to count the number of electrons and compare them that way. Look at your predictable and find the atomic number of sulfur. Since sulfur is neutral, the atomic number tells us exactly its number of electrons. So it is 16. Then we look at the sulfur ion with negative 2 charge. Remember what this negative 2 means? It is actually means we add electrons because electron has a negative charge. So 16 plus 2 giving us 18 electrons. So the anion is going to be the one that has larger size in this case. Next, we compare calcium with calcium 2 plus. Now we have calcium at its neutral state and the other one is a cation. Look at the predictable again. The atomic number of calcium is 20. This means calcium has 20 electrons. Then look at the cation of calcium. Since it is 2 plus, it is the opposite of an ion. We are going to subtract the number of electrons. 20 minus 2 which gives us 18 electrons. 
we'll see which one has more electrons. Well, it is calcium at its neutral state has the higher ion size. Let's arrange these ions in increasing order of ion size. First, identify the number of electrons they have. Iodine has 53 electrons and when it gains one electron, it becomes iodide. It now has 54 electrons. Bromine has 35 electrons plus additional one electron become bromide ions with 36 electrons. Gallium ions lose 3 electrons thus from 31 become 28 electrons while indium ions has 48 electrons after losing 1 electron. You might think that when we have the number of electrons for all of them, you can simply arrange them from the smallest number of electrons to the largest number of electrons. But that's not the case here. We need to consider whether they are an ion, cation or neutral elements. There is a little trick for this. How do we know whether an ion size is larger or cat ion size is larger? Look at the table at the top right of your screen. An ion is always gonna have larger size and following that is the one that is neutral. And at the bottom, the smallest ion size is gonna be the cat ions. So first, we're gonna compare the number of electrons for an ion, which is iodide and bromide. Because iodide has the larger amount of electrons, so iodide will have the largest ion size followed by bromide. Then, after that, we're going to compare the amount of electrons for cations, gallium and indium. Indium should have larger ion size because it has larger amount of electrons than that of gallium. So this is the increasing order of ion size for the ions. Smallest will be gallium ion, indium, bromide and then iodide. Remember, if there is neutral element, then it should come next after an ions, followed by cations. For ion size across the period 2, the ionic radii of cations decrease from lithium plus 1 to boron 3 plus, which is metal to metal, and ionic radii of an ions decrease from nitrogen 3 minus to fluorine minus, non metal to non metal. But, the ionic radii increase from boron 3 plus to nitrogen 3 minus metal to non metal due to the addition of an electron shell that cause an increase in screening effect. When we go across the period 3, the ionic radii of cations decrease from sodium plus to silica 4 plus, which is metal to metal, while ionic radii of an ions decrease from phosphorus 3 minus to chlorine minus, which is non metal to non metal. But the ionic radii increase from silica 4 plus to phosphorus 3 minus, metal to non metal. Moving across the row of the periodic table, ionic radius decrease for metals forming cations. As the metal lose their outer electron orbital, effective nuclear charge increases and cause ionic radius to decrease. Ionic radius increase for non-metals forming an ion as the effective nuclear charge decrease due to the number of electrons exceeding the number of protons. We move on to isoelectronic series. Isoelectronic is a group of atoms or ions having the same electronic configuration or same number of electrons. For example, Sodium ion with plus 1 charge has total number of 10 electrons after losing 1 electron and magnesium ion with plus 2 charge also has 10 electrons after losing 2 electrons from its neutral state. Let's try with sodium, magnesium, aluminium and silica ions. Across the period, sizes of cations and anions decrease due to increase in effective nuclear charge. Thus, the ionic radii of sodium will be the largest followed by magnesium, aluminium and silica ions with the smallest ionic radii. As for an ions of chlorine, sulfur and phosphorus, they have same electronic configuration and same number of electrons which is 18. As we look at the periodic table and across the period, the one with largest ionic radii is phosphorus ion followed by sulfur and chlorine. 
Let's do one exercise for this. Which of the following has the largest radius? We are given with strontium, rubidium, krypton, bromide and selenium ions. To start, we need to count the number of electrons by looking at their atomic number in the periodic table and then add or subtract according to their charges. They are isoelectronic series which have the same number of electrons, 36. Then we look at their number of protons. The smallest ionic radii will be the one that has the most number of protons because the protons and electrons being opposite charges, they attract each other. So the stronger the nuclear charge, the more protons, according to column law, the greater force that the nucleus exert on the outer negative charges. When the nucleus exert a greater force on the outer negative charges, it brings the outer charges in closer. So that increased nuclear charge has a stronger attraction on those outer negative charges which brings them in closer the nucleus, making the atoms smaller. Strontium has the most protons which is 38 followed by rubidium, krypton, bromide and selenium. Selenium with the fewest number of protons has the lowest nuclear charge thus has largest ionic radii. The next periodic trend is ionization energy or sometimes it is abbreviated as IE. What ionization energy is? It is a minimum energy required to remove an electron. And specifically, we are looking at the atoms and their gas state. You should notice that the atom has more than one ionization energy. Let's look at this example here. Sodium is in the gas state and it is neutral. If we are trying to remove one electron, remember, electron is negatively charged. So when we remove the electron, the sodium will become positively charged. And you should also note that we can only remove one electron at a time. So remove one electron from neutral sodium atom is known as its first ionization energy. If we want to do it again, removing another one electron, then we need to take it from the sodium ion with plus one charge. Now the sodium ion become plus two charge and known as second ionization energy. The ionization energy is increasing when we go across the periods and decrease as we go down the rows. Let's do some example. If we were to compare aluminium with sulfur and we are trying to see which one gonna have the highest ionization energy based on the periodic trends. Since ionization energy increase as we go across the period, then we can say sulfur gonna have the highest ionization energy. While nitrogen versus silica identify where they are in the periodic table. Well, nitrogen is higher up, then it will be the one with highest ionization energy. There are exemptions in case of these groups where we call it as anomalous. The increase of ionization energy with proton number is not uniform. There are two cases which involve group 2 with group 13 or also known as group 2A and 3A. It is between beryllium and boron and between magnesium and aluminium. Ionization energy of beryllium is higher than boron because in boron, the electron in 2p orbital is well shielded by the electrons in 1s and 2s orbitals. Attraction between the nucleus and 2p electron is weak, thus Less energy is needed to remove the electron and therefore, ionization energy of boron is lower than beryllium. As for magnesium versus aluminium, the ionization energy of magnesium is larger than aluminium because the electron in the 3s orbital of aluminium are more effective at shielding the electron in the 3p orbital. Attraction of nucleus towards the 3p electron become more weaker Thus, less energy is needed to remove a single 3p electron than to remove a pair 3s orbital in magnesium. Therefore, ionization energy of aluminium is lower than magnesium. Another two cases involve group 15 and 16, nitrogen versus oxygen and phosphorus versus sulfur. 
Removing an electron from nitrogen, half filled to p orbital, which is more stable, required more energy, making the atom less stable or less favorable. More energy is needed to remove the electron and therefore, ionization energy of nitrogen is higher than oxygen. The same reason is applied for phosphorus and sulfur. Coming to the last periodic trend, electronegativity. Electronegativity is telling us how well an element can attract electrons. The trends for electronegativity is going to increase as we move across the period and as we move up the rows. The rule that you need to remember is that fluorine is the most electronegative atom. And also note that the halogens have highest electronegativity while noble gases are not electronegative. Noble gases have 8 valence electrons, meaning that they don't want to attract any more electrons because they have enough. Now, let's do some example. This question asking to arrange the given elements in terms of increasing electronegativity. First, identify their position in the periodic table. Remember, Whichever atom closest to fluorine in the periodic table is going to be more electronegative. That's why sulfur is the highest. Following that is going to be silicon. And then the next one will be scandium because it is higher up and closest to fluorine. Lower than scandium is calcium, then strontium. And the one with the lowest ionization energy is cesium since it is the farthest away from fluorine. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.